Hello, Santa Rosa Junior College Advanced Digital Video students. And we're going to do one more demo here about how to create an animated background that you can use with a title and, uh, and put it inside some kind of a frame. So this is the end result, something like that, where you see there's a little bit of an animation inside a little frame. And uh, you can see it goes across the screen like that. And then you could place text over this. So we're going to do something like that. So I'll start from scratch over here on the right hand side. You start with first making your animation and there are a couple of uh, tools inside the Premiere that uh, allow you to make animations. If you work with After Effects there are a lot more but hey what the heck here we are in Premiere that's the object of this particular class so we'll work inside Premiere. The tool that I like to use is the cell, cell pattern and I need to apply that to something. So I could apply it to, let's say, just a black mat or something like that, but there's a little feature inside Premiere where you can create black video. So I just go to New Item here in the uh, bottom of the project panel and go to uh, Black Video. And it makes it the size of the uh, project, the, of, the, of the sequence, that is, 720 by 480. And we, right now I'm in standard definition, so that's what we'll use. I'll drag black video to the line here. It's five seconds long. I could make it as long as I want, unlike other video where you can't really make it longer than it originally was unless you stretch it. You can actually change the length of black video to any length you want. But we'll stick with five seconds because that's just for dem demonstration purposes. If you're going to make an animated uh, something or another for your, your title, you might want to make it much longer so you can trim it down later. All right. So we need to make this animated in some way. So we'll try the cell pattern on that guy. Once I drop it, you'll immediately see that there are some cells. And here's the cell pattern effect up in the effect controls panel. And you can pick a number of different kinds of uh, cells, cell patterns, that is crystals, plates, static, all these little guys here, and they, they will look different. And then uh, I'm, I like bubbles because it's kind of soft. And if I invert it, you'll see that it's mainly black. And you can always cho choose invert. And then you talk about other things like contrast and uh, size and things like that. And so, you know, for um, something you want to use the background, sometimes large is good because you don't want to be too obvious. Small might be too busy. You know, whatever. You choose what you want. But it's not so much these little characteristics that, uh, that you're interested in so much as making them animated. So I'm going to make sure I animate by using evolution. We've used evolution before, but evolution basically causes the animation to evolve over time. And you usually set the uh, animation, uh, the first keyframe to uh, the first frame of the video, and then have it evolve a couple of times throughout the length of the of the video clip. So I'm going to set a keyframe for evolution here at the beginning, right there, and uh, I'm going to set a keyframe for the end by just dragging the words by pressing page down and getting to the end of the clip. Actually, it's the next first frame of the next clip, but it'll still work. And I'll evolve it twice. I'll go 2x. It might be a little fast for an evolution because it's only a five second video clip, but that's okay. I'm just trying to show you the general way to do this. And you'll, now you see that it evolves over time. I'm thinking those guys are a little too big, so let me just drop them down. We didn't keyframe size. It doesn't make a difference. This will be the same size throughout. The other little thing that I want to have happen for your assignment is that I just don't want them to just sit there moving around in the middle of the screen. I want them to move across the screen. And so one cool thing that you have inside cell patterns is that you can offset things. This the left hand button is up and down, left and right, excuse me, and the, and the right hand button is up and down. So these things you need to keyframe so that they can move across the screen. So I'm going to move this guy back to the beginning of the clip, and I'm going to set keyframes for offset, and then I'm going to move to the end of the clip and we'll have it offset somehow. And since I can't see the offset because I'm one frame after, I'm going to back up one frame so I can see it. And we'll just have this thing offset to the right, like that much. And we'll have it offset, sort of have it sort of flowing down the screen at the same time. So what's going to happen now is that it's, it's going to work, move diagonally through the screen. So now we've taken care of the animation that I'm looking for. I don't need to animate the size or the disperse, or the disperse as they call it. And uh, I'm happy with the bubbles, so we'll, that's that's we've now created the animation. Now what you want to do is make the animation uh, more interesting in terms of color. And there are two ways you can do that, at least or there's at least two ways you can do that. And one is to tint this particular animation directly. The other one is to put some kind of changing color thing above it. So we'll start with just tinting it directly. And the way you tint something directly is, oh my gosh, we put tint on it. Who would have thought? 
So I'll put tint on this guy. I can drag it to the effect controls panel or I can drag it right to the clip. Either way we get tint applied. And we're dealing with black and white here. That's how the cell works. It starts its life as black and white and then it's up to you to color it. And so you want to map black to something. So we'll map black to blue, let's say. And we want to map white to something. I can just I'll make map it to let's say orange and it'll be disgusting. But hey, what the heck? Blue and orange. See how that works out. There we go. Whoa. Kind of Halloweenish. And uh, I could say, oh, okay, I'm done. I have now created an animated thing with a color. Well, if I really wanted to do it in a cool way, I could have the color animate. You can use keyframes on the tint colors if you want to and have the colors change over time, which, you know, that's just my suggestion. You can do that. And right now the colors are kind of extreme. I don't want the, the colors to overwhelm any text that I put on top of it. So I'm gonna, I can knock the uh, amount that I'm coloring it down here with this little percentage is amount to color. I can drag the source and see what it says. Amount to tint. So I can change that so it's not quite so wham in your face like that. I can knock it down a little bit and have it be a little more subtle. Nevertheless, that's one way to color it, but you can see you can either keyframe the colors over time, which is cool, that's a good thing, or you can have it be one color. But Another way to color this thing is to put uh, another little uh, black piece of black video that you've uh, created some color on above it. So I'm going to take that black video here and put it right on top. It's going to smother it. It's going to cover it right up. Now you won't see that animation anymore. 